Yeah, Hrithik, are you there? Yes, I, I'm going to share the video. OK, so kindly go ahead, share the screen. Uh, do that, and once you're done, you can hand it over to me, and then I will take it forward and hand it over to uh, Professor. So, Hrithik, are you sharing the videos right now? I seem to have, uh, I can't hear you. Hrithik, are you there? Oh, I think he's, oh, Diane, are you there? Uh, sorry, I was uh, glitched out. I'm here. Okay, okay, okay. No problem, no problem. Can you uh, start the videos? Yes, sure. There's no audio. There's no audio, Hrithik. Is there audio now? Yes, yes. My bad, sorry. Robotics means collaborative robotics, where human beings and robot work together. We work on technologies of the future. We look at ways in which these technologies will actually get deployed. We are trying to build uh, an ecosystem here. So when we talk about ecosystem, it starts from uh, the kind of research capabilities that we are able to build. How is that we are able to instill the uh, you know sense of commercialization in all those activities when we talk about research you know it's not only papers or publications. So we have chosen four major thrust ideas you may call it. One is called the medical robotics. The second is the defense robotics. Third is the agriculture robotics. And fourth is the industry 4.0 or industry 5.0. The mission of IHFC and the mission of IIT Delhi, there's a lot of synergy. And so we are treating IHFC as an extension of the things that we anyway want to do. The first thing is, first goal of success impact in society through some value added in terms of uh, technologies and ideas. I would definitely want IHFC to make an impact, you know, an impact wherein we see indigenous products being developed, wherein we see uh, our ecosystem coming together to see that we as an entity, we as a country, we as an ecosystem are able to build products on our own. So we should have export-oriented products being developed with whatever research capabilities we have. And that is what, uh, you know, we want to do as a part of IHFC. Welcome to Cobra Talks, a monthly seminar series. Second Wednesday every month since 14th October 2020. 20 plus speakers presented on Cobotics. Our collaborating partners IHFC, Word, Cognitive Science Program, a Department of Humanities and Social Sciences. I have Foundation for Cobotics, 
technology innovation hub of IIT Delhi a national mission on interdisciplinary cyber physical systems by DST Department of Science and Technology Government of India in March 2020 a section 8 company I have foundation for robotics IHFC was incorporated on June 13 2020 about IHFC advances in sensing computation and autonomy are enabling robots and autonomous systems to enter real world domains such as manufacturing defense medical agriculture etc where machines must work alongside and interact with humans we are entering an era of man and unmanned teaming where humans and robotic systems must work together towards common goals the four verticals of ihfc medical agriculture industry and defense our goals human robot collaboration for enhancing human capability and reducing risk and improving productivity our objectives research on novel technology areas of robotics and automation science development of products for benefit of society inculcation of startups and promoting entrepreneurship in india our cq concept collaborate commercialize from research to product the grand projects of ihfc medical simulator human robot interaction control rehabilitation robotics drone applications healthcare robotics human robot interaction intelligence intelligent sensing and secure communication and industry 4.0 bird a center of excellence at iit delhi about bird biologically inspired robots and drones the center of excellence on bird biologically inspired robots and drones at iit delhi is an evolution from its humble research activities which began a few decades ago by its faculty drawn from the department of mechanical electrical and computer science engineering bird has 10 plus projects industrial and academic 27 plus members including faculty students and technical staff across various departments of IIT Delhi 150 plus publication in international and national conference and journals 9 years of experience cognitive science program a department of humanities and social sciences at IIT Delhi Cognitive Science Group at IIT Delhi is to create a knowledge pool that can address relevant problems under the ambit of human cognition both for India and the world at large. It helps students acquire a strong background in theoretical frameworks and empirical approaches of one or more areas of cognitive science. Cognitive science is an emerging new field of study that endeavors to study the mind from multiple perspectives and disciplines by combining ideas, principles, and methods from psychology, linguistics, philosophy, computer science, and neuroscience. This knowledge is applied for developing a better understanding of how our minds, brains work while creating better products, tools, services and policies Cobotox leading the way in the human robot collaboration space
IHFC. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that. Uh, now, in fact, I will. I think we have uh, uh, quite a few people who have joined in, uh, but I'm still waiting for um, Ashtosh or Sahasar to join. Ashitosh or Sahasar, have you uh, joined in yet? No, not not so far. Anyway, in the meanwhile, sir, let me at least take this opportunity for the people who have been extremely well behaved and joined on time. So uh, thank you so much. Thank you everyone for joining in the shop at six. I really appreciate your dedication and thank you so much, sir. Uh, you know, to come on board and agree to do this extremely relevant uh, discussion and talk because uh, today in the day of uh, AI, where everything is completely dependent, I mean, I think even for a simple thing as letter writing or even paragraph writing, people are using AI. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the fear that AI is going to get, you know, overtake a lot of uh, things in the future. I'm sure this topic is on everybody's mind, how AI works, especially in the industrial segment where, uh, you know, it's going to play a huge role. Not only, It's already started playing a huge role uh, right now and even in the future in, in terms of machinery. And how it is going to probably marry uh, a very, very, and have a very smooth transition between human and machine and not make it a very, very uh, machine dominant and a machine dominated uh, you know, life in the future. So I think everybody has those questions about AI and ML, and I'm sure uh, you will shed a lot of light to that, and it's a very relevant topic that you have uh, chosen today. Uh, so uh, to introduce our very, very eminent speaker, uh, Professor Sujit K. Pal, he is a professor in the Department of Mechanical Engineering at IIT Kharagpur. And of course, he has had, uh, held many, many positions and he has multiple feathers uh, to his cap, but he's also uh, you know, has had the, held the position of Lord Kumar Padavichari, Chair Professor in Manufacturing at IIT Kharagpur. He is also the founder chairman of the Center of Excellence in Advanced Manufacturing Technology. And he's a visiting professor in University of Connecticut in USA, and as well as University of Huddersfield in the United Kingdom. He has published uh, a lot of research articles and uh, uh, you know, 193 peer reviewed journal papers, international book chapters, conference papers, and he also has many, many patents to his name. So as we can see, that's why I said very, very eminent and prominent speaker, because he is the right person to talk to you and give you direction as to what the relevance of AI will be in industrial manufacturing. In fact, his innovation, low cost uh, AI solution for metrological inspection is selected in the top three by India AI lab to market which I think is a fabulous achievement by itself and goes a long way to say as to, uh, you know, uh, we have we are really going to learn something brilliant from Sir in the coming few minutes. Uh, he has also collaborated with Tata Consultancy Services and authored many books. He has served as an associate dean at alumni affairs and branding at IIT Kharagpur as well. So he has, as I said, he's a man with multiple fellows to his cap, multi facets, and it is such a privilege and honor to have him today with us. And not to forget, by the way, he's also been featured in the list of top two and researchers around the world, which is published by Stanford University ranking in 2022. So as you can make out, we have a brilliant speaker with us. So without further ado, actually, actually, oh, Ashutosh. Hello, Ashutosh, our CEO has joined us. Thank Hi, Pia. Thank you, Ashutosh, for joining in. Uh, Professor, I would like to introduce our CEO, Ashutosh Tal Sharma. I'm sure you've met him and know him personally. Uh, he's been also waiting to say hello to you and welcome you on board. So, Ashutosh, why don't you go ahead? Thank you, Pia. Welcome, Professor Paul. Uh, yeah. I think uh, it, it's a pleasure for us to host you here on this platform. Uh, it's where, you know, some of the students and some of the, you know, members of our ecosystem, they uh, benefit from, you know, some of, uh, you know, eminent personalities like you who come and, you know, give some time to us. 
and and it's really great to see you and you know i had i just wanted to share with everyone that i had an opportunity to be a part of the facility that he has developed at it kharagpur yeah. and that is one of the best by the way that i have seen so in case you know you get an opportunity to visit it kharagpur or rather you know make an opportunity to go to it kharagpur to you know uh, visit his facility uh, you know and it's an amazing one uh, i complimented him that day too and we would look forward to some of the collaborations that we can do along with him you know we can have a discussion beyond this as well uh, in case you know the, he has some time but a pleasure to uh, you know have you here and uh, all our you know participants are eager to listen to you uh, so thank you so much thank you ashutosh and without further ado sir i hand over the platform to you to uh, blow us off thank you so much ma'am and thank you everybody uh, being present over here today and uh, the topic is uh, uh, you know very known to everybody and uh, uh, by this time everybody has uh, all of us have appreciated the importance of that so i'll share some of our uh, the uh, the understanding and uh, you know the unfortunately this lecture is being delivered by a person uh, who is not uh, have the who doesn't have the formal the education in the field of the ai so you have to bear with me if something is wrong okay so can you see my screen uh, the computer screen yes sir it's absolutely clear so i'll talk about as uh, promised that i'll talk about the industrial ai and i was just checking the time that everything is going you know as per uh, you know the schedule and all Uh, and you have given me 40 to 45 minutes time, so I do not know how much justice I'd be able to do it. It may overspill a little bit, uh, and then uh, plus, please bear with me. Uh, so I'll talk about the industrial uh, AI and uh, what are the use cases of uh, the the AI uh, has been deployed in the field of the industry, uh, industrial perspective, uh, by the Center of Excellence in Advanced Manufacturing Technology at IIT Kharagpur. now before that i'd like to give you a very brief introduction about our center of excellence uh, uh, it has been established in 2018 with the strong support from the ministry of heavy industries and public enterprises and uh, part and in, uh, you know the, uh, the the partnering industries six industries were there with us from the beginning four tata group members and two public sectors so from day one we are in the mood of working uh, for the industry so each and every discussion starts from the industrial need so you can say that it's purely dedicated to the industrial problems we do have the uh, hcc bhl uh, you know the public sector organizations the tca tata motors tata sons tata steel and now uh, six industries were there in the first phase uh, which just you know about to end and the second phase we have got projects uh, inclusion of the three new in industries tata md tata metallics and lm in power we are working in the you know the working strategy following the working strategy of the warwick manufacturing group in the uk while uh, working for the you know solving the projects for those six industries in the first phase we also got ourselves associated with the two public sector organizations the grac garden district builders and engineers and the rdcis research and development center for iron and steel of steel industries so uh, you know uh, the philosophy or the vision of the center of excellence to work in uh, on the modern concepts in the field of manufacturing so that you can bring innovation and at the same time we'd like to create an ecosystem uh, ecosystem between large industries small industries and academic area academic units and all because uh, you know the in india we don't have much of uh, the uh, the uh, many examples of successful examples of the uh, industry and academia collaborations so we move in we prefer to move in parallel paths but the time has come uh, in fact the, it's already at the, at the time like the, we need to work together so for, uh, while working you know, for the industries we are also collaborating with the uh, international expertise our center is very much uh, active in giving training uh, to the uh, industry professionals and the you know both the micro i mean micro small and and the, you know the medium inter enterprises and also for the large industries and while working with the industries the intellectual property is uh, you know the secured 
so we are filing joint patents uh, with the uh, with the industry there are many examples i will show you know so i'll try to highlight some of them so uh, from in the first phase uh, we have been working on four research verticals like uh, ifg has got the four verticals here also the, the specialty materials design and automation additive manufacturing and industry 4.0 so our researchers doctoral scholars they are very much active in doing the collaborations with the industry uh, the you know the industry friends from the industry giving you know jointly solving the industrial problems and at the same time as i mentioned we are nurturing the micro small and medium enterprises so this is working like a catapult center they converting or catapulting the academic innovation that is the trl3 how to make it to trls you know seven or eight so that the industry relevant industry can take it forward for the commercialization so upscaling the academic innovation and putting into the business platform is the uh, goal of the vision of our center of excellence from day one and in the second phase we are uh, going to add it is not a started second phase uh, the one we are going to add one more research particle that is the affordable health care equipment manufacturing with the help of the tata md tata medical and diagnostics now we are aiming to have a self sustainable you know the center so while revenue would be earned uh, executing the industrial projects offering training and workshop and outsourcing our facility uh, because we do have uh, uh, you know the industry scale and sophisticated facility which uh, which are getting leverage but not to a large extent but in future we are aiming to do that so out of this you know fund which would be generated that would be used for the new facility creation research funding and also the manpower funding so from day one uh, the, we are uh, working uh, you know from the revenue that has been earned through the uh, while executing the projects we have been very uh, the active from day one offering the uh, the short term courses and then training programs in 19 uh, sorry 2019 we started offering the composite 4.0 that is the industry 4.0 for the comp, you know for in the composite industries and you know the here the uh, for all cases the the lectures were jointly delivered by the academicians and the industry professionals because uh, you know the we need to understand what is the industry's need and what industry is looking for and what sort of help they are looking for from the academic institute so that you know we can also get ourselves aligned our students can get uh, get, get themselves aligned and, and be ready for the uh, for to be adopted by the respective industries so many such uh, short term courses and the hands on training program have been offered like uh, cobotox uh, we also uh, the uh, uh, you know the conducted saturday manufacturing talks that is every saturday every week we conducted in uh, 2021 to 2022 uh for, you know inviting the researchers uh, the academician industry professionals to deliver talks so 52 talks uh, have been delivered and those are all recorded in the uh, in our youtube channel so uh, the eminent speakers uh, talked about the various aspects of the manufacturing starting from the robotics uh, automation the even the entrepreneurship and many things more and simulations and all Uh, you know from day one we uh, you know they realize that in order to work for the industries our infrastructure must be of the industry scale because uh, when you want to upscale the academic innovation that is the trl 3 to trl you know 4 5 or some or maybe the 6 we face a lot of difficulties so uh, you know if we can if we can produce the same dimension job or the at the same scale which is the industry's need then understanding would be much better upscaling would be much easier so the success rate would be much higher if we work on the real diamonds and all the real like you know job required by the industries that's why we created uh, large facilities very sophisticated facilities we are fortunate to have the hybrid additive manufacturing facility which should be able to print a metal uh, object close to 1 meter length its work dimension i think it is 850 mm or something like that and there many more you know the cnc machines and all we are very equipped in the field of welding because we understand that the welding is uh, one such uh, you know mechanical fabrication process or the method where not much of innovation or the automation is made 
So a lot of scope, uh, you know, is, is there. And we are also fortunate to have, you know, the second phase projects on in the field of the welding as well. We do have the MIG welding facility, TIG welding, spot welding, laser welding, fixed and star welding, and many things more. Those who are uh, the attending the same today's seminar, if, if, they are, if they belong to mechanical engineering, they will appreciate that the, the, these process or these methods or the welding process are very much useful in the upcoming the industry, specifically for the automobile industries and aerospace sectors and nuclear sectors. Just to give you an example of the dimension of the facility that we have, this is our robotic vibration station. So robot, uh, which is uh, having a reach of 2.8 meter, close to three meter reach. It is mounted with the uh, laser, you know, the, the scanner, and it can scan any vibrating object and tell you the location of the amplitude of the vibration and also the location of the vibration. So you can, you know, the design, uh, the, you can change your design uh, once you get to know the, the level of vibration and all. We do have a very sophisticated five axis CNC machines where you can, uh, you know, the control all five axis independently. As a result, you can come up, you can fabricate uh, the uh, very complex, you know, the geometry out of the CAT model. We do have the friction star welding, robotic friction star welding, first time in our uh, the country. So uh, that is friction star welding is a solid set welding method, which is very much useful uh, for the, uh, the welding or the joining the lighter materials like the aluminum. This is our robotic uh, welding facility, MIG and TIG welding facility, coordinated with the job positioners. So we can do uh, the, the welding, various types of welding together and creating, uh, fabricating a uh, complex, you know, the geometry. Now with this uh, brief introduction about these, uh, the center of excellence uh, in advanced manufacturing technology, now I'd like to straight away go into the topic. And the topic is very much uh, the, uh, the relevant in today's perspective. And at the same time, we do have a fairly good idea of what is artificial intelligence is and how much help it is going to bring in and how much help already it has brought in in our daily life. But I talk about only the industrial perspective. Now, when you talk about the intelligence, uh, we mean the collective understanding uh, if for the industries. The, the one area is that automation. Now, here automation, I want to mean that the intelligent automation. That means it's not the PLC based, programming logic controller based, that everything would be programmed, robot would be doing the repetitive job. Industrial cases, most of the time, we find that the unforeseen situation happens. It means that the, the you know, the job which is to be picked up, it, it, it is coming, but it is not coming at the same time, at the time which is supposed to come, or at not, it's, it's not coming at the same location where it is, it is, it is supposed to come, or maybe at the different orientation. So how do you take care of all these, these scenarios? You cannot do the programming because every time the system, uh, you know, the process uh, happens by its, itself and all. So we are, we have developed uh, the programs and there is a tremendous need of such, you know, the solutions, you know, the automations, the solutions for the industries uh, as of now. You can think of a lot of application in the prescriptive modeling. That means that if something happens, how to do the optimal actions and the strategies so that you can predict what is going to happen and all. And of course, when it is happening something, a lot of constants should be coming up, like the condition monitoring in the, in the, in the machining perspective and all. And then the data processing in industry, what happens is that the large, you know, the amount of the data do come up. And so how to extract the, the insight about from the large volume of the data and which will facilitate for the decision, you know, the making. So the data processing is a tremendous concern for the, uh, you know, the industries. Advanced simulations, a lot of data is coming up so you can make use of this data uh, to get to, uh, you know, to simulate the, the process to the health of you know the health of the machines it could be a data driven model it could be the simulation you know the complex simulation model or it could be the the hybrid both the data and then simulation model itself so the complex analytics can be derived out of this you know the data that is being gathered now as of now we find a lot of applications of ai in the field of you know manufacturing is that anomaly detection if something goes wrong, how quickly you can find it out? There are many examples of those. 
predictive and maintenance is also another area where we find a lot of applications are there. They, I, you know, rightly, I was just closely observing the uh, the the video that was played by IJ, IJ, IJFC regarding the cobot, uh, you know, the, the the cobotic applications and all. I fully do agree with that. The the lot of applications are going to come up in coming days uh, in the field of the robotics where the human and the robot will work together to, to enhance the the working capacity or the style of the human being. So human robot collaboration is also a lot of applications we do find these days. Tremendous application in the field of quality. So whether the job is pro job, you know, the quality, whether it is up to the, uh, the requirement or not, if something goes wrong, how it can be uh, in problem can be mitigated. The major advantage in my understanding of industry 4.0 is that you can you are you are having an opportunity to get to know where is the problem coming up and at the very first stage you can identify so you know as of now the when you talk about the quality we mean that the quality of the product after it is completely fabricated or the manufacture but today is because of the ai intervention you when the product is produced through several stages of manufacturing, you can get to know what is happening at each and every stage. So you'll have the opportunity to, you know, go for the corrective measures if something goes wrong. The brain computer interface and, uh, you know, rightly the, uh, the, you know, the, the innovation hub of IIT Delhi is also working with the, uh, the in the field of the cognitive science. So uh, many applications we are, uh, we are thinking that it will be coming up in the field of uh, the the manufacturing, how human thoughts can be put it into the, uh, into the manufacturing domain. I'll also give some examples of that. And then industry, uh, they are uh, very much eager to get to know the complete insight about the process, not only the process, also the health of the machine. If something goes wrong in the machine, uh, you know, how can, you know, uh, how to take care of that, uh, you know, to have the optimum, the solutions. Uh, so all these aspects you can uh, very easily, uh, see it uh, through developing the digital twins and all. Now, uh, the uh, collectively, we see the, the, the smart automation, predictive modeling, image and video recognition, advanced simulation, complex analytics. There are many, many applications in the field of uh, the, the manufacturing. So I'm not going into details of that. So if you take up any of the areas, uh, the logistics, the, or the robotic process, robotic uh, robot-based process automation, or in the supply chain, or in the product development, everywhere there is a scope of the AI uh, to be deployed. Now, it is the concern like whether industry is equipped to adopt that the AI technology to take it forward or not, specifically for the micro, small, and medium enterprises. If you look into the statistical data, then you'll find out that there is a tremendous scope. 3.7 trillion US dollar is going to be invested by 2035 in the field of the AI deployment for the industries, specifically for the manufacturing industries, 3.7 trillion US dollar, which is a big number. Now, the 71% the executives believe that AI is going to create a big impact. But if you think industry's perspective, the 64% industries have already started to invest you know, on the, in the field of AI. But 36%, which is also a good number, a very high number, so 36% of the industries are uh, in, still in, in doubt. And this number is very high. If you, you know, the think of the Indian industrial sector, specifically for the micro, small, and medium enterprises, because our manufacturing GDP uh, is, you know, the grossly depend on the micro, small, and medium and the sectors. And they, they are not technically, you know, the savvy. Forget about the, uh, the digital. A lot of applications are there. A lot of, you know, the, the cases are there or the process are there. It's highly human, uh, the intensive, you know, the process or the manual intensive processing. So how to, and they do not have the big pockets as well. So how to make them convinced and make them able to adopt the uh, the the AI based solution. So one thing you know, the we the researchers uh, you know, uh, specifically from the India, we need to understand that any AI solutions we we are going to develop, it has to be a low cost solution. 
then only our micro, small, and medium enterprises can can adopt. So small, small solutions, uh, if we can develop and give it to the micro, small, and mini, medium enterprises to convince them. As of now, the the uh, the mindset is not fully uh, the done, specifically for the MSMEs. My concern is only for the MSMEs and uh, specifically for the MSMEs, I'd say. And and that's why we we all the time we start discussing with the developing solution how it can be low cost solution. But the difficulty, keeping aside that aspect, overall the difficulty of the uh, the AI deployment in the industrial perspective is that the the you know integrate with the existing system. When you talk about the automation, most of the industries do have the legacy machines. So how the legacy system machines or the systems can be integrated uh, with uh, something? That something will because of the integration of that something, you are going to get the data. And you are going to get to know the insight about the process and the, the detailed health of the machine. And those machines, legacy machines, can also talk, you know, can also be connected with the other machines, maybe legacy machines or the smart machines, so that they can talk to themselves. Another area is that the domain expertise. So many cases, uh, there is a tremendous gap between the AI researchers and the domain experts, the industry professionals. So this gap has to be, you know, the reduced. Another concern is that the data quality. We are going to get the we are getting data, a large amount of the data. Data is there in different forms. So so how to know that the sanctity of the data? So uh, how to remove the noise? Or if the data is incomplete, how to make them complete? If the data is biased, so how can it make it? unbiased because if the noisy data is there incomplete data is there biased data is there then you are the based on that if you develop some model that model may not be the perfect model and manufacturing industry is very very complex and it has got a variability so you know solving all you know physical aspects of the manufacturing process by the ai is a real difficult job and on top of that if you develop an AI model for a particular process, it may not be directly deployed or translated to the other manufacturing process. I'm giving an example like that. If you have developed an AI model for the turning process, it's not that so easy to directly deploy it for the milling process. Even though the both are the, uh, the, uh, the metal cutting operations and the metal jewel is uh, done by the shearing operations and all. So, so this sort of variability is there in addition to the complexity of the process, that means involvement of the various aspects of the physics uh, in the process itself. So these areas are the these points are very very critical, and then and and you know we did the researchers are trying to resolve one after the other, and also taking a very small step like a following a baby step approach. We are trying to solve those. So as I've given an example that the pro, you know the the today's AI model when you develop something it is very much material specific but we forget to take the cognizance of it like if you change if you have developed an AI model for the machining operation if it is for the mild steel you cannot directly deploy it to the stainless steel because the AI model might not have captured the physics of so you know the cutting the uh, the mild steel material and Put it into the, uh, the, uh, the for this cutting for the stainless steel. So AI fails. And as I've given an example of the machine specific, same process, like the, if it is a turning, if it is done on machine X, sometimes it, does, it may not be applied to the machine, uh, you know, the Y. The health of the machine is also an important factor in giving, a, you know, the good predictions. Process specific, we are just given an example, the turning to milling, same metal cutting, it fails. So in general, the manufacturing industries, uh, if you want to think for the, you know, the AI to be deployed in true sense, you have to be concerned about two factors very critically. One is that the accuracy concern. So the, the, the process, the solutions which you are developing, it has to be very, very accurate. And at the same time, it has to be deployed. You, are, you have designed an algorithm. Let's say that the computer science people, uh, scientists, they have designed an algorithm. But that algorithm takes so much of time to solve, then they cannot be deployed into the manufacturing domain. By the time the product has got you know, fabricated. So you have to have a trade-off. You have to have a 
balance like it has to be the human like accurate and it has to be the real time real time deployment if you can solve these two aspects together then there is a success and there are a lot of you know the potentials are there and uh, the people are able to do it but there are many examples also do exist where the the these two are posing too difficulty too much of difficulty and that's why we are not able to go ahead and why the difficulty is coming up that will also I, i'll try to highlight that so some of the solutions i would like to uh, the mention that with tata consultancy services tcs uh, we have been very closely working with uh, the uh, the tcs uh, kolkata and then also that uh, the tcs pune i have seen that uh, uh, mr raju dotheti uh, is uh, you know the attend has attended from the car uh, i am sure i'm I, i i think he is still there online so he'll be, he 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 is aware of this uh, the activity that we have done i'm very believe so it is a real time yes sir you know, yes sir indeed it's a pleasure yeah. to be you know uh, partnering with you thank you for yeah. mentioning thanks <laughs> yeah. so uh, it is a real time well quality monitoring and control of uh, the uh, friction stir welding process you see the people talk about only the monitoring aspects hardly people will talk about the control this is an example which we could do with the help of tata consultancy services where the when the welding is getting done we can collected the sensors you know the data we deployed many sensors so collected the sensors data and developed an ai model to get to know what is happening so that means the correlation between the sensors features with the process quality and at the same time if the process quality you know is is you know going to uh, it's not good going to be a faulty one then how the machine can how can machine change its parameter automatically to get rid of that defect so uh, this has been filed joint patent jointly uh, with the tcs and then us patent has also been made many many publications are there, there. and uh, the uh, and this sort of activity it has got a tremendous potential because we have you know seen the markets in the survey so that is a, a huge increase in the uh, hike in the uh, the the deployment of uh, this sort of strategy uh, in the coming days so as you know that uh, this will increase the production rate uh, it will decrease the downtime and uh, the uh, return on investment will also be very very high so uh, the any sort of any protocol uh, the i mean this protocol that has been developed if it can be put into the process industries so that will tell you the quality of the process and if something goes wrong the process can also be uh, the uh, the process code can also be i mean the product quality can also be improved give an example like the friction friction stir welding it's happening and you will find that, that there are defects coming up but eventually the defects gets mitigated so from the left hand side if we start the welding process and move forward and then on the right hand side it gets completed and then you will find that the initial you know the welding defects it gets mitigated so by this way you know if you can mitigate the defects or the, the your problem then what happens is that the your the chances of or amount of rejection in the material would be much less and then your repairing uh, repair job repair requirement would be much less uh, you know as compared to the previous one another example which you have recently uh, the this uh, i mean the problem recently solved you know the when the welding is getting done you you know these the well uh, for the quality testing people go for the non destructive testing that means without destructing the material they go for the x ray generally the x ray or the ultrasound and when the x ray is done so x ray the produces a film and then that film has to be studied just like our human you know the body if the bone is fractured then we go for the x ray and the x ray is studied by the radiologist and then the radiologist uh, tells us that what is the fracture how much how, how much is the fracture what sort of fracture it is now for an industrial job industrial perspective there will be you know the millions of you know the such x rays if the job structure is job dimension is very big you can imagine a ship so if it is a ship building ship in the ship building industry there will be millions of x ray images or the ultrasound images those are to be studied now it is very very difficult to get first of all the uh, 
uh, you know the the well supervisor rso level 2 supervisor it's not easily available on top of that it is very difficult to evaluate each and every image critically the person who is not expected that 8 hours a day all the time you will be you know staring on to the computer screen and you know very minutely be checking that what is the defect and how much is the defect so we developed when grsc approached us and we studied that problem and we developed a solution now the solution is giving human like accuracy for most of the defects human like accuracy with a garden reach has tested uh, this our software for many many uh, the, the use cases so uh, this is the only software present as of now which is giving the human like accuracy for the you know, you know the blowhole porosity uh, the you know, inclusion wormhole and others and recently garden reach builders and iit kharagpur applied uh, for its uh, the certification indian register of shipping which is an independent certifying organizations it has certified the iso and also the nes so it means that the result is uh, a result is to be accepted by the the industries and all and we have jointly filed the copyright as well for the same so this is a very it is a very simple software uh, so you upload that uh, you know the x ray image and uh, you know the in a fraction of a minute it will tell you the uh, the uh, what is the defective zone what sort of defect it is it will do the uh, the it will check the severity uh, and also the it will put the uh, the uh, apply the protocol the that the iso protocol and others and tell you the uh, the whether it's defective or not or acceptable or not similar work which we are doing it another work so previous one work was on the radiography test this is on on, on the ultrasound based testing so ultrasound is also very much useful and uh, for the uh, for the industries and it is deployed in large extent uh, you know the in the it's more you know the uh, as compared to the, the radiography testing because it is uh, you know the human friendly so you can collect you can do the testing of the large welding structures and all but the problem is that as you keep on doing the uh, the testing the images number would be more and more and critically checking this image would be very very difficult so our uh, the interns and the doctoral scholars uh, they have developed a software ai based software which will identify the location of the defect and also the severity of the defect so this is this has also been filed as a patent one thing i must uh, you know the uh, the uh, disclose or the uh, the tale that all these solutions are developed by the intern students and our uh, doctoral scholars associated with the center of excellence in advancement research in technology we are just i am just the uh, facility you know the provider so this has also been filed as a you know the patent so this is uh, this is uh, you know the software template for that then uh, recently we have done another solutions very much useful as i mentioned at the beginning the health of the the equipment this understanding is a concern for the industry if you know that uh, just like the human health when the uh, how my body is performing and then uh, whether any sort of predictions can be made by the doctor or not if it is done then that would be useful for my uh, for changing the lifestyle similarly for the machines as well so you know that may be a critical component so one such example is that the steel industries in the sintering band they have got the exhaust fan the exhaustor fan is a very huge you know the dimension uh, you know the equipment and that also fail very frequently so uh, the bocado steel plant uh, they are uh, having this problem and through our dcis we got this you know problem statement and our solution our interns and the doctors scholar they have solved it uh, through vibration data so sensors were put by the rdcis data was communicated to the cloud and our students you know real time the data collecting the data from the cloud and, and then doing the uh, ml based you know yeah, ml based analysis and predicting so recently uh, the uh, the uh, in one such uh, the the event uh, the uh, our software predicted much before the incident and it has also predicted much before the uh, the software uh, based other software based prediction which is called the simcon our software is that id so you can see the data on 6th of september uh, you know 238 in the afternoon it has predicted a fall that which is going to happen and the other softwares are predicting much before much after 
So that means if something is going to happen, if you get to know uh, much uh, you know, ahead of the incident, then you have got the opportunity to take care of that incident. So uh, this software uh, we have you know, already deployed in the cloud, is working in the cloud from on, since 23rd of August this year. And we have de you know, they deployed much before the deadline. So many cases, the industry, uh, you know, is very much concerned that the academic institute take a lot of time. But our center of excellence is working. You know, if, when we start discussing with the industry, immediately start working on that, without thinking whether the industry will give us a project or not. We start working, and by the time we get the project, the uh, most of the cases, half of the solution is made. So in this way, we make up, you know, the our, uh, you know, the time, and that's why the center of excellence is successful in delivering many industrial problems before time so this is our uh, the software the iv insight to the vibration vibration data analytics so our students have compared the their developed software we along you know with the other commercially available softwares and they have put all the features uh, into this iv plus some additional features into it now the uh, the area of which I mentioned that the quality is a is one area where AI has got a strong role to play. And uh, if you see the market, you know the study uh, from 21 to 28, there is a tremendous, you know, the hike is going to happen in the field of the quality, you know, the you know equality uh, that is the inspections, quick inspections and the synchronous in inspections and all. So our uh, the uh, these uh, the, the students. They have de developed many image processing based, uh, you know, the, uh, the software, uh, developed softwares for uh, the uh, for various applications, specifically for the automobile applications, because uh, you can understand the Tata, uh, Tata Motors Jamshedpur is close by to uh, the Kharagpur, and then we've got a lot of problem statements. We are very closely working with the Tata Motors in that. So all these problem statements are from the uh, the, uh, the, the 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 Tata Motors and all. So. Because of the paucity of time, I'm just showing some of the examples. This is one one case is that the when you are when in any assembly operation is getting done, so you can you try to visualize that the assembly of large number of components and critical components and sometimes the small dimension components. So whether each and every component is rightly placed or not, and if we, if it is placed, whether it is properly placed. And uh, so all these information you can get to know just by uh, capturing the image and then processing that image. Now, at the beginning, I've told that we intend to develop solutions, which is a low cost solution. So even though the problem, the, you know, the component may be very critical, very small, but we apply, we uh, deployed the, uh, the webcam, knowing the fact that the webcam results should be very poor. But we work more on the AI aspects to improve the image quality, which is captured by the webcam, to make it comparable with the image quality taken by or captured by the good quality camera. And then from there, the analysis of the solutions is being made. So our students have, uh, you know, the developed ones are solutions for the assembly operation and fuse box. And it is uh, uh, the NIT Durgapur intern along with our doctoral scholar. So they have developed this, you know, the solutions. and file the patent as well. Similarly, for the printed circuit board, you can appreciate that the printed circuit board has got many small components like the IC, register, capacitors, and sometimes the soldering, ways just to check whether the soldering is properly done or not. So all these things, you know, the checking of these factors in a large number when the component is produced in a mass scale is a, uh, is a very difficult task for the industries to take it forward. So we have developed a, uh, the uh, software, uh, AI-based software, which is giving also the 100% accuracy for that. And uh, just, uh, you know, let me quickly move. This is another problem statements, like the two objects are there, the, the you know, industry called as a lookalike object, same dimension, say, I mean, the same look, a little, little variation in the dimension, one of the dimensions. Now, you know, checking these, components on a regular basis in a regular basis uh, you know eight hours in a day by human being is a very difficult job if you put the, uh, the some sort of a gauges or the instrument then it is going to eat up the time so how to uh, to get rid of that simple image capturing and processing by the webcam it has uh, it has you know it is giving the solutions with 100 percent accuracy and all 
Now, all these in the small, small solutions we have developed and provided to Tata Motors for the deployment. This is another example for the Chessy Dimension J canal. I'm just skipping. Another problem statement is that, that you know, reading the text of the tire, sometimes the wrong tire gets fitted during the assembly of the new car. So uh, the or to get to know the deep analysis, analytics, you can develop the analytics like the which car has got which tires and then what is the uh, when it has been changed and if you study the uh, the uh, the uh, you know the terrains or, or the the road conditions and then you get to know the uh, the how long it tire is going to uh, the going to be used or run. So all these factors you can you can find out for, through the deep analytics uh, by simple uh, you know the AI based operations and all. Sometimes the uh, the you know it is a it is a critical job for the micro small and medium enterprises to get to know the uh, the process quality. Like uh, one such example is that the one uh, micro small and medium enterprises nearby Kolkata they approached us. They are basically the casting. They they do a lot of casting. So when the mold is prepared out of sand, sand is mixed with uh, the water, resin, and catalyst. And if whether each and every component, uh, each and every uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the the resin or the catalyst, whether they are getting mixed up properly or not, uh, out of the good proportions, that can be very easily checked uh, by the, the the sensors and do the analytics. So we developed this one uh, for for them. The problem with that this sort of analysis is that they're getting a sensor right type of sensor. Now, IoT-based sensors, we, India, we are not fabricating. Uh, we are not manufacturing the IoT-based sensors. So they are mostly imported. And if you import the IoT-based sensors, the cost of the solutions will be very high. So what we did is that we deployed the low cost, uh, the, the sensors, and then developed a control, uh, the box, which will collect the sensors data, whatever may be the sensors data, convert it into proper signal, and then you know, transmit it into the cloud, and there we have developed the analytics, uh, which can uh, which can derive, which can tell you real time that what is happening and all. Um, yes. Now, many such cases like we find a lot of success, but uh, the but there are many cases where the AI fails. The main problem, the failure of the AI or the model that we develop, we hardly take into cognizance of the health of the machine. We develop the AI model based on the, you know, the data, historical data, but the health or the prediction, it does also take into cognizance of the present day scenario. So the past and the present, both are to be uh, the collected, both the data are to be collected. Then only you can predict the future. Like if a human body, just like a human body, the performance of the human being, if you judge by taking the data for youth and then and the person of having age 50 plus, then if you develop a model for that, for, for that particular person, then it will be a wrong model. You need to take also that how that, you know, the human being is uh, performing for a particular task at these particular days, and then how, what is the decay of the health of that human being? So this present day scenario also needs to be taken into cognizance. So that's why the, the, uh, the many such cases we find the, the AI also, uh, the present day AI model fails. I'll skip some of the slides because the time, uh, because of the time factors and all. Now, many such AI models, uh, we find that they are unable to solve the uh, real life industrial problems. As I mentioned that it is very, very complex and at the same time, the, the variability is there. So when can in AI solve the problem, industrial problems like a human being? Human being, it works with a very small amount of the data. But if we work for the develop an AI model, it needs a lot of data. So, you know, the the generalizations of the knowledge, which which is getting uh, the which is learned from that experience and all. So uh, that is not being properly translated for the unforeseen situations. So we so learning of the present day AI model is not very strong. To get it deployed to the uh, the the you know the, the situations which are not seen previously, sometimes we are unable to and the AI models are unable to reason around why it is happening. The AI model fails to solve a puzzle. So if you uh, try to put all these attributes of the human being, like learning from the experience, using that experience to plan it for the unforeseen situations, 
and examine that what has happened and how a complex problem can be solved. And from there, the entire awareness of the system, what is happening, which you call it as a consciousness. If this can be developed, then the, the, the AI model will be able to solve many of the industrial problems. So it means that the, the AI present day AI models, which are derived from the, you know, the biologically inspired, uh, the neuroactivity, but that the inspirations or the neuroactivity is not properly portrayed. So we need to more of the, the, those aspects and then get to see that the, how that can be deployed. So that means the AI models the, which are developed, mostly the weak, you know, the AI models that has to be made more and more strong. Now, human involvement or human intervention will play a lot of role in coming days. If you see the artificial intelligence model, this is the general protocol that the model works like this. If there is a process or the, the equipment, we collect the data, we derive the features, we develop the AI model, and then we go for the predictions if what is happening, and then maybe another AI model to give you the uh, the process, I mean the feedback system that what is the new process parameter in this way the AI model works. Now, if we use the same process or the same machine over a period of time, then your you know previous model is not taking the real time feed or happening and enriching it models so the end model has to be more and more uh, you know the uh, give importance of the the, the present this data as well so uh, you can we can also think of that the human intervention it may not be a direct intervention it may be an indirect in intervention it may mean maybe a, 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 let's say the the uh, not not continuous uh, the the involvement in that. So if a process is happening, the the AI is doing that job, but human intervention may be sporadic, and it can think that some if something goes wrong, it can give the input to the uh, the AI model. This you know the transformation, uh, this uh, you know the uh, the data uh, transactions from the human mind to the AI model can happen completely. That means the indirect way the human thoughts, if we can capture and put it into the AI model and make a corrective measures in the AI model, then AI model can predict much better results. So a lot of applications is there. Your, uh, you know, in assembly is getting done or the quality is getting, the, you know, the quality process the quality is to be checked. So the supervisor is there. Supervisor is not present all the time in the in the process line, but you know, uh, just uh, taking a round if, if it finds that something is happening or maybe for the remotely observing the operations and all, and then human thoughts can be collected and can be also fed into the AI model. So we can call it as the cognitively intelligent, the, 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 the manufacturing. Now this cognitively intelligent manufacturing can be controlled as the mind as well, like your thoughts as I mentioned. So uh, you are not telling anything, you're just observing the process. Your ideas are the thoughts while observing the process can be understood or the, maybe the data can be collected and understood by the robot and robot can take a corrective measures. So you can say that the utilization of the conscious mind of a skill operator. Operator may not be present over there. Operator may be remotely, you know, the, 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 the present. So this can be an example of the mind control, you know, the manufacturing. So uh, the, uh, you know, the one, uh, the researchers uh, jokingly mentioned that the can machine be conscious? Can machine have a, you know, my both mind and the brain together? Can the, can the expert uh, the, or the skilled worker sold, be sold in the eBay or the Amazon? And I believe when I first read this article, I, I got surprised and you know, a little bit puzzled. And, but when I deeply thought and I found that, realized that, uh, that it is very much true. The days that come that human thoughts or the human soul can be can be made available in the in the Amazon and, or something like that. Because human thoughts or philosophy is, if you can document it properly, that for the skilled workers, that documentation can be downloaded uh, in future by the the newcomers or the unskilled, and and they can understand that for how when something goes wrong, how to take care of that. So the training will also be very much you know, that useful. I'll give you an example of that and, uh, as well. 
So I'll just so uh, the the uh, present day AI models actually fail in manufacturing because of the uh, the they are purely you know the data driven model. So we need to do large number of experimentation generate the data. Then only we'll be able to uh, get to know that what is happening and all. And sometimes it cannot focus a zone of concern effectively. So there is a problem of the, 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 the attention. If you are given an image and we quickly can focus to particular, you know, the zone or the zone of concern. But if that, you know, the, uh, the image, same image is given to the AI model. So there are main requirement of the large number of image for the AI model to focus to particular zone. So it cannot, you know, the capture the past information. It cannot sometimes they forget the non-required things sometimes you know you know uh, we forget things which is a good thing because the we don't need to remember each and everything so that's why the you know the term memory came up so the utilization of the things at the right time is the concern for the uh, for the uh, the present day ai uh, the is the problem as i mentioned that the transfer of knowledge from one domain to the other is like solving the problems and all these are all critical uh, the, 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 the cases where uh, the AI model present as AI model fail in the case of the manufacturing. And that's why we developed an AI model for the turning process. Again, we developed the AI model for the, uh, for the milling process and all. So if we can have an AI model or, the, or any model, which should be requiring less experimental data or the less data, which can work on the less data, which can correctly focus on to this, you know, actual in the portion of the zone, if it can utilize the what it has learned from learned previously from the other case to the present problem statement, that means it is going to going to develop the problem solving skill. It can also reason it that why it has happened and all. So all these sort of sort of learning, if we can uh, have it in the AI model, then the AI model will be very much uh, the effective in solving the manufacturing uh, the problem statements. So the there are there is a lot of uh, the uh, the you know the need of the cognitive skills which is still not properly there because our brain functionality is not properly discovered. So if you see the the attention, memory, perception, problem solving, and reasoning and learning, each of these activity in the human you know the brain with the help of the neuroscientist, if we get to know, then computer scientists can portray the brain functionality of each of these in a proper algorithmic fashion, then we, the manufacturing or the mechanical engineers, or the let's say the engineers of the other domains or the scientists of the other domains can make use of it. As of now, since the functionality is not properly uh, the, uh, the, uh, the known, that's why the, the, it is not able to reach to the level that is required. So these attributes of the human brains are not portrayed in the AI model in, in its full sense. It is portrayed, but not in full, you know, the sense and all. So in our IIT Kharagpur Center of uh, the Excellence, we thought that we let us uh, work something in the field of the brain computer based interfacing, like how the cognitive, uh, the you know, the concepts can be put into the manufacturing domain as well. So as of now, there are not many work there, so we initially started working on the, the color segregation, whether the human thoughts of, you know, when a human being is observing the different colors and then the brain signal, which is getting uh, out of that through the EEG, uh, you know, the, the, the sensors, whether these six, you know, the signals are of the different quality, different types. After, you know, the lot of uh, the, uh, the analysis and all, we could, we are able to segregate the EEG signal while observing the red color of object from the EEG signal, which is pertaining to the green color object. Now, there is, there is a lot of complexities there because the when you are capturing the, the brain signal, it captures many things. It captures not only the observation, it also captures some, you know, our, uh, the, some thoughts which are happening in the subconscious mind. Like, I'm giving an example. I'm giving an example. When I'm delivering this talk, it's not that the all my neurons, the 86 billions of neurons which is which are supposed to be there in my brain, if I, if they are there, they are not 
all of them are active or working for these the, 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 the deliberations. Some of the neurons or some portions of the brain would be doing something else. So that else would be the noise to the present phenomena. So that, but those signals have to be segregated out. So it's a com very complex, you know, the, the, the job. It's unlike the segregation of the noise uh, from the currents uh, in the signal or the, the voltage signal or something, uh, the power signals and all. So uh, we are doing a lot of activities on the brain computer interfacing for the machine health classifications and all. So if a machine health is wrong, I mean, is faulty, and machine health is it's becoming weak and all. So how to get to know just listening the the sound, so uh, and or by or by the thoughts. So uh, you know while observing the uh, the operations and all. So we have started working on that. We have also started working on the uh, the uh, the image classifications. Many cases we find that the if I would like to classify. The two objects, like one could be the cat and one with the dog, human can very easily tell that which one is the cat and which is the dog. But if you want to segregate these two images by the AI-based model, then you need to have large number of the, the, the images and all. So how come, you know, the, when I'm observing the, the cat, then whatever is my thought, the brain signal, if that quality is, you know, brain signal quality, since it is it be better because it is capturing lot of informations and all. So the, the, that quality can be properly uh, the study of that particular signal and made it different from the, the image, uh, from the signal which is uh, acquired while observing the other object. So in this way, we have seen that the, the less number of uh, the, uh, the images are required for the classifications of the job. And this, is a, this has got a tremendous application in the manufacturing domain. As I mentioned at the beginning, that it is very difficult to acquire data, quality data in the manufacturing system. So how come an AI model or the, let's say the, the ML or the DL model give you the human-like accuracy with the less number of data? And we have seen that the uh, different types of the models and then the AI-based models and our the EEG-based models and EEG-based models outperform the DL-based model in the image classifications. So it means that the uh, the uh, if we can properly impregnate the EEG concept into the DL model, that would be then uh, and maybe we don't need to have the requirement of the DL model. Maybe a small ML model with a less computationally intensive that can be used uh, to surpass or to overcome the uh, the difficulties of the the DL models and all. So many such examples are there. Uh, the uh, for for such cases, we are we have been working. We in fact we have submitted a project proposals uh, recently uh, with the DST and NSF National Science Foundation uh, in the US. And you know the as I mentioned at the beginning that the industry is very much looking for the uh, the development of the digital twin. So uh, and uh, the digital twin of any equipment is. Is this development it would be a, a tremendous help for the industries, and we know that this development would be requiring two things. One is that the data driven, uh, the the data information, and also the physics based model, because all information cannot be captured uh, through the data. Sensors you can put it at a particular locations, but the sensors cannot be there. Are you know the, they are not the, the, we don't have the sensors for each and every thing. physics to be captured. Like if I want to find out the stress, if I want to find out the stress of a sap, which is there inside the, uh, the, 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 your, your motor, it's very difficult to get to have that, you know, the thing. So that's why we need to have the physics-based uh, model as well. And clubbing this physics-based model into the data-driven model is also a difficult thing. So how, and again, the data. So uh, the, if you are having a very healthy machine, then how to get to have the faulty data and all? So we are trying to work on this area that to create a hybrid digital twin, which should be able to, you know, the simulate fault in a progressive manner and, and come up with a concept which can be used for the, in the context of the scalability. What does that mean? That if I want to develop a digital twin for a milling machine, then digital twin with a little bit of 
the uh, the factoring, I can make use of the digital twin for the turning machine as well. I've given an example that the AI model uh, for the turning machine fails the fail if it is to be deployed for the uh, for the your milling operations or milling process and all. So we are trying to come up with a concept called the prime twin. So our students, doctoral scholars and the students have been working, like if a system of systems are there, if I can disintegrate the system of systems into several systems from the several components to several subcomponents, and then finally coming up with a prime component, which cannot be further disintegrated. And that prime component may be used in the several applications. Like if a shaft would be there in the pump, it would also be there in the motor. So if I can get to know that how to create a digital twin for the SAP, having the different, you know, the boundary conditions, then the, the same concept can be further leveraged into the field of the, uh, while developing the digital twin for the, uh, for, the, uh, for the motor itself. So the, you know, the scalability or the transferability of the knowledge from the pump to the motor would be very much, uh, you know, easy. And as a result, it is a one-time deployment. So what will happen is that one time if we can create the prime twin for all the subcomponents and all, then there will be a library of the uh, the uh, the subcomponents uh, sub and which can be plug and play. And so that will be further, you know, decrease the development co cost. It would be all only using as a plug and play, you know, the concept. So we are uh, we have just started working on on this area. With this, I'd like to uh, the, uh, finish my lecture because many of the slides I had to skip because of the you know the time, and uh, and I'm, I'm I'll be happy to answer uh, the the queries and all. Yes, sir. next time we'll hold a longer session for you because uh, you know I'm, I'm sure there are many things that uh, we would love to learn from you and you could not uh, showcase today. And a visit yeah. to your lab is of course a must do after seeing all the videos. So yeah. uh, we would uh, request you uh, to actually open the floor to questions. So if anybody has a question, please raise your hand and unmute yourself and ask your question, please. So before that, uh, I'm Sangeeta Garg. And uh, yeah, I'm also part of COIN team, uh, Raju's team. And very happy to see, in fact, uh, two uh, two of my organizations that I've worked. One is TCS, obviously, another one is Sale. Uh, so I worked in Sale Start, uh, State Authority of India Limited, with the yeah. steel plant. So yeah. you know, I just co able to correlate. You know what you were talking. So great, great presentation, great learning. Thanks Thank a lot, you. sir. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Sangeeta ma'am. Thank you, Sangeeta ma'am. Uh, anybody has anything to say or ask any question related to Sir's talk? Please raise your hand or and unmute yourself. Uh, yes, go ahead, Nilesh. Yeah, N Nilesh, go ahead. Uh, hey, uh, hi, sir. Uh, thanks a lot for a very insightful session. Uh, so. I wanted to know, like, uh, as a research point of view, a lot of things are being done. Uh, on the industrial point of view, uh, adopting them as products, solving specific issues. I wanted to understand, and specific to say, predictive maintenance. Uh, yeah. How do you see the industries currently? You know, uh, are are they adoptive, adoptive to you know uh, the technologies like uh, predictive maintenance via using vibration sensors and uh, incorporating it with AI? So, are industries like uh, MSMEs uh, adopting it, or still it is uh, a thing for you know large scale industries? Cost sensitive. Yeah, I I told I told at the beginning that uh, this is really a concern uh, for the uh, for all of us. I would say that the you know not only for the MSMEs and all, uh, the MSMEs uh, the AI deployment is almost zero. In Indian context, in Indian context, specifically because I have been uh, interacting with the MSMEs uh, in the eastern part of uh, the, our country, and there I hardly uh, had seen the uh, deployment of this uh, the EIML concept or the Industry 4.0 concept. And not only the deployment, it is uh, the, it's very difficult to convince them as well. 
so these uh, the the two factors are there because the msme is not fully equipped they don't have the big pocket they don't have the fund and on top of that they also uh, they are also a bit much scared about the academic institutes uh, to solve their problems and uh, because they don't have the fund so they don't they are unable to give us the solutions give us the problems so even though we are ready to solve we cannot solve and the second thing is that even though some of them are having fun they are a little bit reluctant to work with the academic institute because we do have uh, you know the some sort of a, a bad name that we take a lot of time to solve uh, an industrial problems we are not uh, our mindset is not pro to the industries many cases many cases you know they, that's because i i interact with the industries i get to have that feeling and all so first of all that mindset has to be changed and our center of excellence we had taken a promise of the stand at the beginning that any industry will 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 discuss will immediately do the brainstorming and start working and engaging students one good thing for our academic institute is that we do have a larger number of student strength so sometimes data you can synthetically generate sometimes data you can get it from the lot of the open source uh, open resources and all and then you can start developing creating a dialogue with the industries on daily basis is is this, this has to uh, this has to take place if you place to work with the industries you have to be very open minded and discuss with the industries on daily basis please take it from me this has to be done otherwise you will not get success I'm giving an example. The garden receipt builders, our doc, my doctor is called Arubi Shekhar Mukherjee. He had visited more than 30 times to garden receipt, stayed there, spent night in the garden receipt, you know, receipt building, you know, the premises, and understood that the how they are going to, you know, the evaluate. So it is not only from the data. Sometimes the human cognition, human power. So that those factors we are trying, we are. you know that quick into the our ai model that's why we made our ai model so more of a human like one it's not purely understanding the data sometimes the human intelligence is also put in the way human works on that those sort of static similarly the the rdcis work the uh, you know every week my doctor scholar uh, the ananta who is present also the he and along with is the the intern they used to discuss you know the completely uh, one uh, the year 52 weeks they discussed and then they, they and they, and they developed the solution so industry is interested it's not that industry is not interested industry is interested they also need to change their mindset sometimes you know they they are also not very much they are need to also be open minded to give problem unless we are given problems how can we get our mind mature mature so the they also need to change their mindset we also need to change their mindset we are moving in parallel path both of the units need to convert then only that will be a convergence and finally i tell that there is a namaste sign that means the agreement agreement greeting greeting so this convergence has to take place it's not there in msme we have to this a uh, strong role is there to develop low cost solutions so anything you do develop a, try to be low cost uh, try to come up with a low cost solution sir thank you sir thank you but thank it's not you, very sir. easy to get the money from the industry it's not very easy to <laughs> so you have to do a lot of you have to be in the dialogues for a long long and you have to pursue forget about ego do don't keep your ego and all don't think that like being i am it professor why should i you know uh, approach so many times with the industry if i think in that way then i will be doing something wrong approach should be that we need to solve a problem solve an industrial problem so if we can jointly solve an industrial problem then there is nothing like it and those solutions are there abroad maybe with a uh, importing the high cost so we'll be saving the import will be you know making use of our own you know the country grown resource and all so this sort of concept of the philosophy has to be established a lot thank you sir thank as you. you said a mindset change needs to happen i guess at both ends uh, so any more questions uh, please raise your hand so we can see uh, that you have a query nikesh thank you so much for your question please drop in your email id Uh, on the chat box, so that we can send you your Amazon voucher for asking such an interesting question, which I'm sure has got everybody thinking. So please do drop an email. I thank you, Nikesh. Anybody else uh, who wishes to ask a question before I hand it over to 
uh, our project director, Professor Saha, to say a few kind words. Hello, we are. Good, e good evening, good evening, Professor Saha. So good to see you. <laughs> we would love to hear from you. Yeah, so nice to see Sujya. So to be uh, yeah. in our co talks. So I mean, I I was so pleased to you know have him here because he has already invited me twice. So I could reciprocate at least once, uh, but I would love to have him physically here. Uh, it could have been done, uh, but then uh, he said that he was traveling to Delhi. I could have make him stay, but then these 30 people all around the country would not been able to enjoy this. So anyway, so so let's be happy with the quarter. So thanks, Ujia. Now I joined a little late, but I got a lot of insight, the beautiful work, and uh, let's see uh, now how uh, IHFC can be blended uh, with your nice work to be taken to even MSMEs actually. You know, you said MSME is a challenge. So we are very closely working with uh, all types of industry. So thank you very much, Ojo, for, for sharing your thoughts. And one day we would love to see you physically at our campus. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, yes sir, sir. Next time we'll have a thank hybrid you. one with sir on campus as well as online presence, uh, first of all. Uh, Sahasa, would you like to present the uh, voucher? Yeah, so, so yeah, it's a, as a token of appreciation, no? uh, it's a 150 euro gift voucher, book voucher for you and sponsored by Springer. So please accept this voucher. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> thank, so much. You. thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank, yeah. thank you. Thank you, Professor Sahan. Thank you, sir. Thank you for that enlightening uh, discussion. I'm sure uh, uh, people would like to even probably ask later on more questions. So if you could just drop your email ID, sir, on the chat box, in the chat box, so that people can uh, note down your email ID and ask you questions 